morning, everyone. I'm Davin. And I'm Dave. And a very happy new year from all of us here at FBC. Yeah, and hey, what a better way to kick off the new year than some announcements. Let's do it. Today, our kids' new Christian class series begins at 12.30 to 1.30 in the Fellowship Hall. That class also meets on January the 9th and the 16th at the same time. You can still attend today even if you haven't signed up, so don't miss out. This class teaches kids about what it means to follow Jesus. Yeah. Also, Wednesday night activities are back, and starting this Wednesday, January 5th, uh, Wednesday night activities will return, so don't miss out on your chance to get involved. On Sunday, January 16th, we also have parent-child dedication in the 9.30 and 11 o'clock services. You can register on our website, fbcbolivar.org. Yeah, also on January 16th, we'll be hosting another Discover First Class. Uh, so you can sign up on our website to attend and learn more about FBC. Yeah, we would love for you to get plugged in. And also, to learn more about upcoming events, visit the website, fbcbolivar.org, or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Have a great week and enjoy the service. Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Bolivar. We're glad you're here today. We want to welcome those who are with us online or listening by radio as well. If this is one of your first times worshiping with us, we'd ask you to text the word guest to the number on the screen, 417 282 8322 so we can help get connected with you. Um, also, after the services in our lobbies, we'll have someone at our info hub table that would love to help you learn more about First Baptist and get connected that way. Let's begin this morning with a reading from God's Word, Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 through 25. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him to the one who seeks him. Let's stand together and sing great things. Let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has the great things. See what His Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has the great things. He has the great things.
God be the glory. Thank you. You may be seated. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and just have a moment where we quiet our hearts and thank God for who he is, what he's done, the great things that he's done. We're going to ask him to help us in different ways and just go to the Lord in prayer. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. We have a lot to be thankful for. I know everyone talks about what a tough year 2021 has been, but there is very, very much in all of our lives that we can thank the Lord for. He's a great God who gives us lots of blessings. There are some things we want to ask God to help us with. Our church is searching for a pastor. Um, tomorrow is a, an important day for many of us. We've kind of been in the vacation mode and Tomorrow, January 3rd, we kind of get back into our normal routines and, and rhythms, and we can ask the Lord to help us be a good, a good witness at work, a good ambassador for him. He can help us 
settle into our, our jobs and um, just be a, a, a good testimony for him. I know the weather is, is tough. It's, it's cold this morning, so we're going to pray for many of our friends who couldn't be here and, and pray that God would protect them. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for all of the blessings that you give us. You are a good God. We acknowledge that 2021 may have been difficult for some of us more than others, but Lord, whoever we are, whatever we've been through, we want to be very careful and thank you for the, the great ways you have blessed us and all of the things that you've given to us. And Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you for that beautiful song that we just sang. Lord, there are things that we would ask you to, um, to move in our lives and, and, and help us, Lord, that we can't do on our own. Lord, we pray for the, the search committee. We pray that you would lead them and lead us to the right pastor for our church. Lord, we love our church. We're thankful for it. We pray for the person that you have in mind to lead us. Pray for all of our folks that aren't doing well with their health and that are sick and even the ones that have lost loved ones. We pray for your comfort, your protection. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your protection and from things that we don't even know are there. And Lord, as we maybe go back to work tomorrow and settle into the normal routines and rhythms of life, above all, Lord, we ask that you make us good testimonies, good ambassadors for you, we could represent you well and be a good witness for you. Lord, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you, for Lord, for the chance to sing about you and worship and pray and just be together. Go to your word together. We are thankful for this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue our worship by singing hymn 96, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
these songs, I was thinking about this week. What a pivotal moment at crossroads between the years. And we look back and we look ahead at the same time. I wanted to plan songs that as we look back, we see the faithfulness of God. We see it and we carry that faithfulness that we know as our hope into the future. So let's stand together. Let's sing another song of God's faithfulness. Who can satisfy?
Thank you. You may be seated. morning. I know it's cold and um, we appreciate your being here. When it is weather like this where it's 10 degrees or so I always worry about my outside cat. His name is Sherman. We have an inside cat Felix and an outside cat Sherman and we can't really get him to come into the house. He's kind of mature and set in his ways. Anybody know anyone like that? Mature and set in his ways and we try everything and about all he'll let us do is when he's by the door and he maybe scratches on the door, meows, Rhonda will get the blankets, warm them up in the dryer and take them out and he'll hop up in, in the chair. And, and uh, I, Rhonda told me that he made it through the night, so it's a, that's a win and we're glad to have Sherman, Sherman for another day at least. Um, Sometimes I think that's too much for Rhonda to do that, but I think, you know, someday I may be out there scratching and clawing, and, and I'll be happy that she does that, right? I'll be happy I have a wife with that kind of heart, and I mean that. Today we're going to look at two stories in the Bible, and we are going to look at one in Exodus 14. You probably know this story pretty well. And then we're going to look at one in Joshua chapter 3. And you may not have read this one that much, as you have Exodus 14, and I think that they are alike in a lot of ways, and I think that they are different in a couple of ways, and that those differences can show us something really important about our lives. At least that's how I see them. They're, I think they're alike enough to go together, but I think they're different enough to show us a couple of, Im of important things this morning. I believe these stories can show us that God grows our faith differently in different situations. That's today's takeaway. God grows my faith in different ways through different situations. You know, everything we go through, all of our experiences in life can have the capacity to grow our faith. Even the ones that are routine, or you may think that they're not as important or not very challenging or a normal circumstance, those have the capacity to, to grow our faith. Um, but then we have situations in life or seasons in life that are harder, that are a little more challenging, and what I want to do today is show how those situations, even though they're hard, even though we, we may not want to go down that road again, they have the capacity to really increase our faith and our dependence on God and the way we look at him and what he said. Um, so let's talk about Exodus for just a minute. There are a lot of famous stories in Exodus. You have the baby Moses and that basket kind of starts there a little bit and that's a great, great story. You have the burning bush as Moses is older and God begins to work on him to lead the children out of bondage. Um, then you have all the plagues, you know, that happen as Pharaoh just refuses to let the people go. Then we hit Exodus 14, where we're going to read from today, and that's the point where Pharaoh regrets his decision to let the people go, and he wants them back, and he sends the army after them. Now that is a, um, that, that's a pivotal time in Israel because the, the army chases them right up against the Red Sea and they feel trapped. In fact, we can just say they are trapped, right? Because unless God does a miracle, unless God moves, unless God opens up a path where there doesn't look like there's a path, they're in trouble. And maybe you think of your life where you've had situations like that. You feel trapped. You feel like you... You have things that are too hard for you on your own. 
you feel like there are maybe people chasing you. You feel like that. Or you feel like that there's something you just can't get through on your own. And unless God moves, unless he does something, you're in trouble. Maybe you, maybe you feel like that right now. Well, that's where they are. That's where they are in Exodus 14. And let's, let's read beginning in verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. What? a moment that was what a thing can you picture it in your mind how that how that went down i mean you've seen the movie with charlton heston right you've seen that moses is up on that high place and he's looking at the sea and i don't know if they can hear the army behind them maybe they can hear the the horses or the the clanging of the armor they they feel like they're chased And they're looking at this big, impassable body of water. Moses is up there. You know, he's their hero. He's leading them. And he stretches out his hand. And all of a sudden, God makes a way where there was no way. He gives them a a, a way to get through and get away from their enemy that they didn't have before. So they do that. Moses stretches out his hand, God splits the sea, and down goes Israel to the water. And they come down, it says that God made the sea dry land, and it even says that they, the waters became a wall on each side, and this part it says is dry. What a moment that was. You know, if you were in that group, that would change the way that you feel about God. You would change the way that you felt about God's protection and his love and his care and his word. It would change the way you felt about him. Your faith would grow. You you would have the capacity of a situation like that, depending on how we handle it, has the capacity to grow our faith. What a moment to go through. You know, we have moments like that in our lives. We have a problem, and and God uses something or someone as a catalyst, and all of a sudden, we have a way out of that problem that we didn't see before. We felt trapped. We believe God, and he opens up a way. And that is a blessing because it grows our faith, and we can believe him for even more things in the future. There's another story in Joshua when God's people crossed a big body of water in Joshua 3. And it has things in common with that story in Exodus 14. Now, Joshua was a new leader for Israel. He had to come in right after Moses, and he had some pretty big shoes To fill. I mean, when you think of the giant, like the Mount Rushmore of the Old Testament, Moses is way up there. And Joshua had to come in right after him. And I I suspect that there, there were moments when he questioned his own leadership. And Joshua, early in his career, Joshua 3, we get three chapters into into the book, and here he is right at a big body of water. And it has some things in common with, with Moses' situation. First of all, they're not getting over without a miracle. It's too hard for them. It is, a, it is a place they can't get through on their own. Another thing is that God told Joshua that one of the reasons that he would do this miracle, it would show the people that he was with Joshua like he was with Moses. He wants Joshua to know, and he wants the people to know, and he wants them to maybe even connect these stories so 
so the Lord would show the people he's with Joshua just as he is with, was with Moses. He said that to the Joshua in the first part of chapter 3. So in many ways, these stories go together. I think that to, for me, I feel like I need to read them together because they go together. And I think it's because I need to see how they're different. And let's look at one of those. Let's pick it up in Joshua 3 and verse number 13. And it shall come to pass. As soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon and heap. So a big difference in that story is that Joshua and his people, they didn't get to watch God do the work from up here. He says, when you go to this water, Joshua, you take that group down to the water, and the priests are going to have to go down and actually put their feet in the water, and then... I'm going to split it and make a way. Whoa, that's different. That's not like Moses did it. Moses did it from up here, stretched his hand over. God did it. They saw it and went down. Joshua, it's a little more challenging the way I see it because what they've got to do, he's got to take all the people and he's got to move them down closer and closer to the thing, the problem, the mess. He's got to get all the way down, and they get closer and closer, and it still doesn't look like God's doing anything. Still doesn't look like. Even when the priest's feet are an inch above, it doesn't look like God is doing anything until they step in, and boom, then he splits it. That's different. That's not the way he did it with Moses. Another way to say it is this. Joshua has to take the people down, believing all he had is God's word. That's all he had. There's no evidence of movement. There's, it's, it looks like God's not doing anything. He has God's word, just not the evidence, until they step in, and then it opens. There's another difference. Look at Joshua 3 in verse uh, number 14. Joshua 3, 4. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan. So I just want to bring this up that they had to get out of their tents, get organized, and get mobile to go. So, you know, back in the Old Testament, if you read, um, especially in the book of Numbers, to move Israel was a really organized, detailed operation. They had to get in groups and pack up a certain way, and they just couldn't bounce around. So Joshua has to pick them up, pack them up, and head right to something that he has to cross, and God doesn't split it until the priest's feet hit the water. I just point that up because it's, it just seems like a different situation to me. They had to get in the water before God made the way for them. They hadn't seen evidence that God had moved. All they had was his word that he was going to move. It wasn't like Moses. I can imagine how um, the conversation that God and Joshua had. Joshua was a new leader. And in my mind, I imagine it. it maybe it didn't. This is, this is how I imagine it how God told Joshua about what's about to happen. Joshua, I'm going to make you a promise just like I made Moses. I'm going to show you and the people you can depend on my word just like Moses could. It's going to feel different. It's going to look a little different. But I want to show you that you can depend on my word just like Moses and his people could. You're going to have to pick up, get the people out of their tents, and move ahead. And you're going to have to act like I'm going to do something. You're going to have to act like I am even before I do. Many people might start to complain and say you've made a mistake. You might hear some of the people say that we didn't do it this way when Moses was our leader. You keep going. 
It's going to work out. Just believe what I said, and it will work out. Um, 16. And as they, the priests, that bear the ark were come to Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks at the time of harvest, that the waters which come down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far from the city, Adam, that is beside Zarathon, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jordan. I know I said this about Exodus 14, but what a moment to live through. When you go through a moment like that, in two ways. One, you, you can't get through without God, but two, your leader has put you right on the edge of the, of the situation, and then God moves. That can grow your faith. doesn't look like there's hope. You are almost all the way down before you see anything that God does in the situation. But on the other side of that, you look back, and that really can grow your faith. Are those times hard? Oh, yeah, they're hard. Do I want to go through them a lot? No. The ones I've been through, I don't want to go through again. But I can look back and see how God grows your faith in those situations. We all have different problems in life. We all have different situations. We all have different kinds of messes we're in. But you could point to a time in your life when you think, I had to just keep going before I knew God was going to do something, and he did, and that was a time that grew my faith. You know what I like the best? I like Exodus 14 times. I like the times in my life when I get to stand up and see it from a distance and watch God move, and I don't have to really do a lot. I don't have to really get into the mess. I can just watch him move, and he opens up a path that I didn't see was there, and then, after I know that everything's clear, the ground is dry, then I like the times when I can go through the path that God makes for me that I see him make from a distance. And I'm not making fun of that, because God does that, and I do appreciate that. What I don't like as much are the times when all I have are his word, and I've got this big situation that he has promised he's going to move in. And I've got to get closer and closer and closer, and I don't see him do much. I don't see him do anything. I don't do anything, even not even right here, not right here, not right here, and but boom, here he goes. I don't like those as much, but you know what? As I look back, I can say, wow, all I had was God's word, and he came through for me. And my faith has really grown. You see, in Exodus 14, their faith grew. In Joshua 3, their faith really grew. Your faith can grow in either situation. One's not better than the other. It's just that this has the capacity to grow your faith. In fact, you know what this path is? This path is a hard journey. But it also, this is where the faith is. If I handle this path well... If I can take a step, even though it's hard, even though I don't like it, even though you know, people are mad at me and all the other things, I, I get stronger and stronger. Even though I haven't seen God move, I get stronger and stronger and stronger so that when God does move, this becomes a very important part in my life. If I complain, oh, why do I have to do this? This is dumb. I shouldn't have to do this. God has singled me out for suffering. My faith's not going to grow very much. Now, God's going to move. But I have wasted this hard journey where my faith could have grown. I like these better. These are better for me. One time Jesus was doing some ministry with his disciples and they were, they were on the shore and he said, follow me. He tells them, come with me, stay close to me. 
let's be together. And they do. They follow him. And you know where he takes them? He takes them on a boat. And they get into the worst storm of their life. A horrible storm. Now that, that, is, um, that is an amazing thing because they, they did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They weren't doing anything wrong. They were in the right place. They were close to Jesus. He went exactly, they went exactly where he told them, and yet he leads them right into a storm. They have to wake him up and, and, he, and, and help, help us, you know, calm this down. We don't know what's going to, we need you to really uh, be active here, Jesus. And he wakes up and he calms everything down. Now, um, one important takeaway from that is that Jesus has power over all of nature. Amen? He can stop storms. He can stop uh, the wind and the rain and the hail and the lightning and thunder and the waves. And um, he, can, he can take the parts that, in life that give us motion sickness and calm those down. He has power over the storms in our life. But I think there's another takeaway for me um, in that book, and that is that if I'm in the middle of a storm in my life, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not close to Jesus. It doesn't mean that, necessarily. Because if you think about them, they were right where they should have been. Right where Jesus verbally told them to be. Stay close to me. They were right there. Right in the place where he took them. And then all of a sudden, their circumstances were hard. But it didn't mean they weren't close to Jesus. It may not felt like they were safe. But really, they were in the safest place in the universe. Now, we, we can see that looking back at the story. But if I were there, I probably would have, you know, I, I would have been frightened also. But knowing what we know now, they were in the safest possible place they could be, but may not have felt safe. Just because we are in the middle of something really hard and challenging and scary and a place maybe that we want to go again, I can do what Jesus says, and it has the capacity to grow my faith. Just because I'm there doesn't mean Jesus isn't with me. Doesn't mean I'm necessarily doing something wrong. Doesn't mean I'm in the wrong place. It may mean that I'm just along this hard path as God is growing my faith and getting to a place where I can see what he does even though he hasn't done it yet. All I have is his word. And I may be on this path where I'm stepping into hard situations on the way to where he will do a miracle. Father, we love you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the way you move in our lives. Lord, you give us situations that grow our faith. Lord, sometimes those situations are hard. Help us keep pressing on and to be strong and brave. Help us be reading your word, hearing what you say. Um, Lord, help us know that your word is enough. And sometimes the, the circumstances are scary and hard, but Lord, your word is enough. We believe you and your promises, and we thank you, Lord, for the chances we have in life to grow our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together as we sing by faith.
the prophets on the day. When the long poor Messiah would appear with the power to break the chains of sin and death and rise triumphant from the grave. By faith the church was called to go. Power of the Spirit to the lost, to deliver captives and to preach good news in every corner of the earth. We will stand as children of the promise. We will fix our eyes on Him, our souls reward till the rain. shall be moved, and the power of the gospel shall prevail, for we know in Christ all things are possible, for all who call upon his name, we will stand as children of the promise, we will fix our eyes on him. mention that if you would like to talk to a pastor, maybe about uh, following Jesus or being baptized or joining First Baptist Bolivar, we would love to connect with you. If you could text the word connect to the number on the screen, we'd appreciate that. Also, there are many ways to continue to worship through giving. Um, you can give at the buckets that are at the worship center exits as you go today, or you may give any, any of our other ways online, through the mail, or in the church office. We just want to give you those opportunities. As we close today, instead of um, a, our traditional benediction, we're going to sing a benediction. Um, all glory be to Christ. Let's sing together.
Thank you.